Right, today it's harvest time, one of the last few ponds remaining to do uh, up at the farm. It's the 5th of December and we're going to get stuck into the Issa Showa that we've been raising this year. Uh, these always command a lot of interest as we've seen sort of globally, demand for Issa Showa never falters, you know, it's always on the up, everybody's looking for them. Uh, last year we had some incredible results, you can find uh, all that content on our YouTube channel. Uh, it took a slightly different, you know, sort of change in strategy this year. So we decided to buy a smaller size. I think they came to us about 20 to 25 cm last year. Uh, these this year were between uh, around 15 to 18 cm, I think, something like that. So a lot smaller. The basic, the, the thought process behind that was that we would be able to get uh, the, the, the fish at the first release even more affordable in price uh, than, than you know last year's and we did manage to achieve that which is great because it's making them more accessible for people to get their hands on and enjoy this fantastic bloodline. Uh, yeah, I had quite a lot, I, can't, I think it was about 2,000 pieces, uh, 1,500 to 2,000 we bought this year, so bought even more uh, because of that demand. And uh, yeah, the results still looking in the pond now are being exceptional. Uh, there are some Hoshkin koaku in there as well, which are fish that we've not documented. Uh, but focusing on the Issa, uh, I think it was the end of February we did the first video. And uh, that was the first selection at that point. Pond had been really heavily stocked and uh, the growth has still been quite considerable. So like I say, you can watch back on that video. Uh, a few fish in that, in that particular episode that we highlighted I will be looking at again today so you can see the end result from there to now and see the journey that they've been on in that time frame and I think it was the end of September we tuned back in again uh, to have a look at the update at that point and the results again had been good but I'd been plagued by the pond being overstocked for too long uh, just through not having ponds ready to, to get the koi we were releasing out and this is something that's plagued me with a couple of ponds uh, this year. So in the end, I did quite a rigorous selection and, and got that right down. And uh, yeah, it's at that point, uh, it weren't too much later when I off to, uh, got off to Japan, left the feed on a nice setting, uh, not had any alterations while away, and I got back and I was really, really happy with the results. So uh, from then, I think it was the beginning of November, uh, I got back, I've been working on the feed quite intensively for that period and have gained even more volume and size since then, which brings us to today where we're gonna get uh, get stuck into the pond. For those that don't know, I'd say Issa Showa is one of the top bloodlines uh, for Showa in Japan, full stop. I think he's only probably rivaled uh, in quality and demand uh, by Dainichi. And there's possibly in the Showa ranks say that Issa possibly even has more demand there than uh, Dainichi, which is, is quite crazy, but the farm has really specialised in that variety for so long. It's only sort of recently they've been heavily investing in, in Koaku as well, which seem to be doing incredibly well. Uh, but yeah, on the Showa, uh, they've been renowned and famed for the size that they can achieve, true jumbo lineage fish uh, and the body. It was the body that really set Issa apart. Some of the early examples were so powerful uh, in their shape that they actually, to me, almost looked a little bit deformed. But this, this body trait became very popular in the Asian market and that's what seemed to really take off. Since then, we don't see so many of that. It's like it's been refined more, uh, but yeah, huge size, huge power, and, and serious quality. We're talking Benny and Sumer quality that's, that's up there, you know, the, the very best. It's sort of like the benchmark for a lot of farms. So yeah, uh, amazing farm, amazing shower. Uh, next year, we are planning on sort of downscaling it a little bit. We're just gonna go for smaller uh, numbers of higher quality fish. So uh, when these do circulate uh, and, and sort of run out, you know, the, from the really affordable aspect, I don't think we'll see that many more in the market next year. Uh, but I think it's important to have a, a mix up uh, and a change. So yeah, uh, let's get stuck into the pond. Just you know, final bit of background on that, which you will have picked up from the other videos. They've been in one of the other, in one of the three and a half K ponds, uh, feeding on Saki growth color, 50-50 mix for, for most of the season. 
And yeah, like I say, I think the results have been exceptional. I haven't pushed the size as hard as last year. Two reasons there. Obviously, the size of the fish initially was smaller. And I think altogether last year, the results, there was a lot more focus. The stocking levels were uh, more in control, more where they wanted to be at all points. Whereas this year, been plagued a little bit, like I say, by overstocking for long periods. And, and that just causing, you know, things to sort of drag on and time's gone. Uh, so... Yeah, uh, let's go and get the net round and, and see what we've got in there. First impressions, uh, a glance, I'm delighted. Uh, although I sort of said it's not been as successful and controlled as last year, I think we might end up finding, looking at what's beside me here, uh, size-wise, probably achieved not far off what they did last year. Just in my head, that ever sort of striving need to, to push harder uh, and get better and better results has probably set a, a different benchmark in my head. but. Anyway, uh, they look superb. We can see the Hoshkin Koako in here as well. So we've got a bit anaesthetic now. Going to go in the bowl just to slow these down as we go through. Uh, try and get the best idea of a, a gender check as well while we're in there. So yeah, Issa done it again. <laughs> Happy days, but uh, I'll start getting them out now one by one. I'm basically going to select a few pieces that I'll probably be looking to grow on next year. And then uh, the rest, which will be releasing for sale sometime soon possibly just by our website or maybe in uh, some of our online auctions, who knows, but uh, yeah, let's get in and have a look. See from first uh, first bowl up there, they they look good. Uh, some top pieces in there as well. Mixed backs obviously with some. The, the skin condition again. There's been no conditioning on these yet. They're just off the back of heavy, heavy, intense feeding. They've had about three days off the food now as well. Temperature dropped slightly. So as with all our fish, they'll move into a conditioning phase now where we'll work on shiroji like with this fish, for example. Lovely is to show a lot to do. White skin's not all there yet at the minute, but that'll soon uh, soon pull around and be, be lots to come from that one. Then there are others where it's already there a bit more like with that one. Every koi is different, they all respond differently. Uh, that's a pretty exceptional piece, that one looking at it. But yeah, size wise, you can see, I mean, it's some absolutely monstrous fish. Looking pretty impressive, that one to say the least. And uh, yeah, definite female by the feel of it. So yeah, I'll get on now, uh, checking them one by one. Look at that, superb Kindai Showa. Absolutely love what's going on with that one. Lovely, lovely balance, great body, great height. Motogoro starting to come there in the knuckle of the fin. So much to come from the Sumi yet on this one. Super, super looking piece. Again, with these, which has pretty much been the case with this to show a male, female, uh, I'm not forced. Issa has been one of them bloodlines that's really sort of led the way in, in male fish production. So, yeah, uh, so either way, I'm, I'm good. And, and seeing from the results from the ones I've kept last year that were male, they're exceptional fish. You can see there the sperm come out the vent on that one. So just as I've squeezed it there, we can see the sperm that's come out and I already had, you won't see it on the camera, but there's very, very clear uh, oiboshi spots around the front ray of the peck fin. That one needs no... So we can see there, look, just from the, the belly, the way it's sat, very female shaped vent where it slits across and there's a bump forming. Uh, but the body, the body tells us all we need to know on that one that it's a, a female fish. Another one there as well, we can see that female vent. Super fish that though. This is actually one that we will look at in detail that was uh, featured on the first video as a standout fish and uh, yeah, sure enough it's delivered on the goods. 
So as ever, if you've watched any of my videos before now, the main focus for me here, first and foremost, is looking at the body. There are varying body types amongst, but again, male or female, I'm not, before I'm even checking that, I'm looking at what the bone structure setup and the body setup is, because that's the most important point as far as I'm concerned. The rest, you know, they still need a lot of time. Fish like this one, this is really potentially developing into a stunning shower, just slowly, slowly. I know this is all new uh, sumi development on the head starting to form. We've got Motogoro only starting to come at this point now as well in the base of the fin. All these things are big game changers and big box ticks for a lot of people when they're looking at these as a new purchase. You can see the sumi quality here look just absolutely insane. If you imagine that over the rest of the fish, it's going to look pretty impressive. Again, just look at the quality there. Benny Sumi, absolutely immense. Bit more of a traditional uh, show of this one. Don't see too many of that type, especially not from Issa, but wow, the quality is coupled with that body setup as well. Super fish. You can see this <laughs> remarkable beast. Talk about that Issa body. The power in this fish is just crazy. Look at that hump, head, backbone absolutely everything what a monster of super quality sumi as well when it all eventually forms up there's a, a lot to do with that fish still but what a beast that skin quality there is just immense so much sumi forming on this at the minute i think given another few months you won't recognize this fish really exciting prospect see all that sumi all waiting to it's starting to come out as well motoguro in the fin sat there lovely prospect interesting thing with these three fish uh, these are actually Hoshikin Showa I think we only did one potentially two videos of these uh, but to be honest the total end results I mean there's just three fish left here uh, so, I mean don't get me wrong this is absolutely superb got a potential sort of koi show standard fish that one uh, for the UK lovely lovely fish but uh, yeah, overall, I, I think what, what's happened here is, although I had a lot of the Hoshikin show to begin with, the quality level, and I, I saw, um, they're very different as Tosai, but he just doesn't produce as many showa as somebody like Issa. Therefore, the quality level at that point is very different. So with Issa producing so much, so many fish, culling so hard, uh, them early stage Tosai, I would say definitely substantially better than those I got from Hoshikin. That's not a slight on Hoshikin Shore, I absolutely love them, they're superb. This is that numbers game there playing out where at that early stage, this has just got far much more to offer because of the quantity he's producing than what Hoshikin has. So certainly in future, I'll now adapt. I won't buy them that small that early again. I'll, I'll pay more attention if I'm having Hoshikin Shore to have them further down the line where I can see them laid out a bit more, possibly even select uh, what I'm getting and go from there. But that's all learning in the Koi game. Uh, three nice fish there for sure but out of the thousand that came in uh, not, a, not a cracking result but like I say not a slight on his fish they are amazing it's just the numbers game playing out there just another little bonus snippet if you like let's say not been shown before these are my uh, the last of my Hoshikin Koaku I've sold a few of these along the way some nice pieces as well because of demand for them uh, there's been some super fish out and this is just speaking previously about the numbers game with the Showa. this is Hoshikin's main production so we produce this quality even like I say out of that, that early selection some superb fish here of considerable size as well they are absolute growing machines from this lineage they, they really don't hold back you can see here I mean this this is just prime example the Benny quality the body got absolutely everything going on that stunning stunning fish lovely example so yeah i'm a big fan to be honest if, if i was narrowed down and limited to places i could go to buy koaku oshikin would be absolute top of that list for me he gets a very attractive pattern style uh, which is very pleasing and then yeah again you see examples like this where it really comes together the quality of that shiroji even without conditioning the benny the pattern everything happening there superb fish again look at that body power huge head 
everything happening with it. So yeah, there's a little snippet of them. Uh, I'm just going to take a closer look. Selection's done now, so we'll take a closer look at the results of some of the Issa Showa, and then that'll be them put to bed for this year. Very intentionally, I've chose these five fish because back on the very first video, these were all fish that I highlighted as being potential sort of star prospects uh, at the end of all this. And I think they've sort of lived up to it a little bit. We'll start with this one, potentially the very best fish in the batch for me at the minute. This is a male fish superior body i mean really and i think you know back then this is what i was harping on about with this one that bone structure and it really has lived up to it now super super example very very happy with that one still plenty more uh, to come from it this one's quite a an interesting one because this basically at the time that you'll see on the on the previous that early video had a lot of sumi up in the skin but that young sumi just dropped off the minute it started growing and the heat came and now we can see it re-emerging. And this is that sort of sumi where it's sitting more in the top of the skin like I've spoken about before. Very quickly at the minute, day by day, we've got new sumi, we can see it all down here, look. Just appearing around the edge of the scale like it is doing there, quite messy, quite unsightly at the minute. That's all gonna change in a short space of time as this messiness forms into solid blocks of sumi and completely, completely transforms that fish. This one, pretty consistently again different sort of sumi with this one where it's, it's sat in the skin already this pattern this sumi pattern is never gonna change it's all there it's just a case of waiting for it to surface as we can see it's starting to in areas now and the quality is just immense so you imagine this the rest of this pattern with that level of sumi we're on to a serious serious piece here and uh, female as well which is a nice touch Next up, we've got one that I sort of stated was a potential bit of a gamble fish. Uh, not gone perfectly to plan. I mean, the fish itself is mega. Uh, it's just I'm suffering with a bit of sort of secondary heat problem uh, on the head at the minute, which can happen, unfortunately. This is koi for you. But as an overall result, that aside, this would be the, the, the prime piece in the pond for me. Super bone structure, uh, female fish. But you can see between them two there, male, female, you can barely tell the body apart in its in its setup structurally both very very similar uh, but amazing we can see the shiroji condition uh, really nice even now so we'll just have to see what happens with that that secondary color but overall again a super result and, and what happened with this one it was the sort of benny this sparse benny pattern can be concerning when they're younger uh, whether it's, you know knowing whether it's going to stay or not but it did uh, after it stuck a bit of size and i could see the level of pigmentation that it had sat here in the scales and the sashi, which is important, and it gave me a lot more confidence, and it's, it's gone on to sort of uh, reward that confidence in it. And finally, this one. Definitely needs some work on the shiroji at the minute, which will come. Uh, but yeah, this, this kindai has pretty much stayed in line with how it was looking at Tosai. Head's forming, it's got a really nice shape, head to it, a lot more to come. But again, with this one now, we're just waiting on this sumi. We can see it starting to progress in areas and then all of a sudden when you look at that pattern what's happening here on the head there's going to be a big change in that fish over this next conditioning period so uh, yeah very happy with them and I think it's going to be nice to be able to show you that journey from a small toe side uh, to what they are now and uh, we'll just give them a size check so you can see where they're at and then yeah happy days uh, so yeah size wise we've got 46 uh, up to 50 cm in there which I'm absolutely delighted with given, like I say, what they've been through with the, the stocking levels being too much for most of the season. This sort of last spell where I really got it thinned down, they've done exceptionally well. Typical, it's a shower and they're, uh, yeah, almost bang on point size-wise. I think we only had a few last year that sort of tipped over the 50 centimetre mark, maybe 52, 53, so all things considered, I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon with these. And, uh, yeah, I think the, the it's a shower vibe will just continue because the quality of this bloodline is really top notch so i uh, hope you've enjoyed following them this year and uh, let's say next year we're not planning on doing as many just a batch of, of higher quality fish from the very start but we'll see where we get we, we never know when i'm the fish are in front of me anything can happen <laughs>